This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Escape the Invasion and Quip. And before you ask, yes, we've seen the fart gender reveal. Yes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you know how we've all been talking about how gender reveals are getting way out of hand these yeah. days? Well, some lady on the internet decided to play off of this cultural zeitgeist by jamming some colored baby powder up her butthole and then farting it out. And, uh, here, I, I might have to disagree with you on this already right off the bat because I think that she put it in her vagina and queefed it. Because there's a lot of girls who have that ability. You, it's harder to fart on command. Queefing on command is an ability that some women have. I don't know if this really changes much. <laughs> <laughs> also, the trajectory. Like, oh, it's just her vagina. Then. <laughs> oh, all right. The trajectory, though, is that you gotta. You really gotta analyze the film. Yeah, so we can't really show much of this because it is a bright pink fart or queef ejecting out of a person's bare ass or vagina. But it's you a, get the idea. This is already demonetized, but still, it, it exists on the internet. You can go watch yeah, it. It's out there. You, yeah. Yeah. Now, if you really want the full experience, believe us. There, there are links in the description. Uh, the, the true experience, which we've now robbed you of, is going into the video not knowing what to expect other than there's like a woman lying there with no pants on. But then all of a sudden, boom, she farts out a gender reveal. It's a real shocker. Yeah, you no longer get to experience the mix of surprise and disgust of seeing the video for the first time not knowing what's coming. But you can still show your friends and give them that gift. And when this girl inevitably becomes a child's entertainer on YouTube years later, this video will certainly not come back to haunt her. It's still nowhere near the blippy situation. No, not at I all. I wouldn't compare them at all. No. This is actually something children would find more enjoyable than adults. Probably. Kids do it all the time. They're always, f where they, you put the baby powder on and they fart yeah. it right back up. We've all seen the America's Funniest Home Videos. Also, no, this woman is not actually pregnant. Obviously, she's on her stomach. She is a YouTuber doing a goof, which is, it's a disgusting goof, which raises the uncomfortable question of what the smell of baby powder and fart would smell like. But it's a good goof nonetheless, and it's better than her usual goofs, which are mostly just her falling down on purpose in public and just scaring the shit out of the people around her who think she actually hurt herself. Hmm. Eh, kind of, uh, kind of not cool. Yeah. And unfortunately, if you found that baby powder gender reveal girl fart disgusting, I'm afraid this next story is so much worse. Yeah, this is not an episode that you want to eat before, and or you, during if, or after. If you did, just you're never uh, eating again. Just. Just take some time. Have, put that gumbo away. Ugh. This week, our local LA NBC News affiliate broadcasted a report that they've been working on for a while about homelessness in the city, particularly in Hollywood and downtown, and also the rising trend of violent attacks by the homeless. The report included multiple specific instances of these kind of attacks, which it's important to note are committed entirely by people with severe psychological issues, and uh, one of the specific stories involved a whole lot of poop. Well, specifically, diarrhea. Yeah. A bucket of diarrhea. Mm. A bucket of hot diarrhea. Back in March of this year, a woman named Heidi Van Tassel went out to dinner with some friends in Hollywood, and after getting in her car following the meal, she was pulled from the car by a stranger who dragged her into the street and proceeded to dump a bucket of hot diarrhea on her head. Quote, it was diarrhea, hot liquid. I was soaked, and it was coming off my eyelashes and into my eyes. Paramedics who came to treat me said there was so much of it on me that it looked like the man was saving it up for a month. That's a fun thing to say to someone that just had shit poured all over them. <laughs> wow! Wow! That's a lot. That's a lot of shit. That he's been saving it up. That's definitely more than one uh, deuce. Yeah. You say it was hot, right? It's probably month-old shit. Mm. Uh, she also said, it was all inside my car because it was so much. He just kept pouring it and splattering it all over me. So, yeah, that's very, very horrific. It's the worst. Van Tassel was taken to the hospital afterwards to be tested for infectious diseases. And while it sounds like she tested clean, she now has to get retested every three months for God knows how long, because I guess that's just how it works when you have your entire body covered in hot diarrhea. Obviously, in addition to the physical toll that something like this takes, there's also a psychological toll. Van Tassel says, it's so traumatic. The PTSD that I'm dealing with is beyond anything that I've ever felt. There needs to be some kind of help for the victims of these crimes. Yeah, the police also, they were like, yeah. Uh, uh, we'll have someone get in we'll touch. Have, someone will get in touch. A counselor, a city counselor will get in touch to provide psychological services. And then they just never did. Uh, surprisingly, though, despite going through this incident, Van Tassel doesn't hate the guy who dumped the diarrhea bucket on her, saying this. 
He doesn't need jail time. He needs mental health care. I have empathy for him because he needs help. That's compassionate. Uh, She's a good person. She, <laughs> she did not deserve a bucket of diarrhea on her. No. Head. Uh, yeah, according to police and court records, the diarrhea bucket guy was diagnosed with schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders, but after being charged with battery and taken to jail, he spent just two months in a mental institution before being released back just out onto the street, which doesn't really seem like a long enough time to make much of an impact. Uh, and as Van Tassel says, what's the next thing he's going to do to somebody? If he would have had a knife, for sure he would have stabbed me. And that's, you know, that's speculation, but it's, uh, you know... A reasonable concern? Yes. He he had the he had the bucket. He, for whatever reason. He yeah. had a bucket of a month's worth of diarrhea and he used it as a weapon. I mean it's gross. The only way to stop a bad guy with a bucket of hot diarrhea is a good guy with a bucket of hot diarrhea. Everyone needs their diarrhea bucket when they go yeah. out these days. Just to yeah. be safe. And I don't want to hear anybody saying anything about no hot diarrhea zones. Hands off my diarrhea bucket, Obama. Mm-hmm. Well, that's... Shall not be infringed. Absolutely disgusting. And, uh... Yeah. I mean, and it's not, like... Uh, an important thing to note, there's a great Citations Needed episode about this, but, like, uh, a lot of local news broadcasts about homelessness are uh, kind of fucking uh, bad. Yeah. They're dehumanizing. This one, though, it, it, they, it was pretty on the level. Like... They, it didn't seem like they were trying to basically make the case that these people need to be thrown in camps and exterminated. So that's nice. Yeah. It was a pretty even-handed story. Well, but, uh, yeah, that's fucked up. Hey, we've always told you to avoid Hollywood. Yeah, that's, yeah. Any, Hollywood Anytime and, anyone's like, whoa, what should I see in LA? Not Hollywood. Yeah, don't. Hollywood is, uh, sadly, it's, it's a place where uh, the lost <laughs> people of our society often congregate. Uh, yeah, it's it's very Hollywood Boulevard is very much a boulevard of broken dreams, mm -hmm. as Billy Joe Armstrong once sang. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, to to be clear, we are, have very much compassion for homeless people. There's a lot of problems, and we we don't know how to solve it. It's an issue that is uh, especially bad here in California I because mean, of the 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 weather here. Yeah. So, so they like to come. Yes. And uh, yeah. But mental health would be a good start. Well, that would be a fantastic <laughs> start, but, uh, well. But that seems to be the source of a lot of problems. Just yeah. Some, drug addiction, mental especially health. Especially this diarrhea bucket. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate. Yeah, fucking uh, Superman just died. Yeah. And, um... Hey, to be clear, since no one knows what you're talking about, there's this there's this guy Hollywood on Hollywood Superman. Boulevard that uh, dressed up like Superman. He was there before everyone else started dressing up yeah, his stuff. And, like uh, thirty years. He lost his uh, he lost his apartment, lost all of his stuff. Was on the streets, got yeah. addicted to crack, died uh, trying to get clothes out of a clothes donation box. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, real fucking sad. Mm -hmm. LA's got all sorts of characters where. Everyone just sort of knows who they are because you drive past them. Like, uh, Hollywood Jesus died like a year ago. Yeah. And I was like, damn, dude, I used to see that guy all the time. Yeah. He was everywhere. Now he's fucking dead. It's sad. Yep. Anyway, speaking of poop, though, while most of us find the idea of being covered in it to be gross and not desirable, over in India, or at least one village in India, they see things quite differently. And yes, there is an unfortunate racist stereotype about India being... Covered in shit, and everyone in India is just totally okay with being covered in shit. But, um, well, these particular Indians here do, in fact, appear more than okay being covered in shit. And to be clear, the shit that you see here being happily thrown around like snowballs on Christmas is not human shit. It's cow dung. Bullshit. Much like the Spaniards in the town of Bunyal have a giant tomato fight every August just for the hell of it, over in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu, in a village called... Guama Tamparam, people do basically the same thing except with cow shit. Every year, villagers collect dung from around 3,000 local cows, put it in a big pile near the local temple, and then just fucking throw it at each other and get it all over themselves for fun for several hours. Yeah, they're just swimming around in it. They're, they're putting it on their head. It's like, it's like going to a volcanic spa. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's good, great for the skin. But it's, uh, it's hot cow Smelly, shit. Yeah. Now, the reasons why they do this aren't entirely clear, but it, it sounds like they do it to honor the spirit of a shepherd who once lived in the village. Um, all right. Uh, still, though, it seems pretty gross, but according to the locals who participate, uh, having cow dung all over your body is actually uh, really good for your health, and no one ever gets sick doing it because God is watching over them. 
or something. Mm. And uh, meanwhile, a bit north up in the state of Andhra Pradesh, the village of Kairupala also has a big cow shit fight. <laughs> But for different reasons, this one's to commemorate a Hindu mythological marriage dispute. So basically, it's a historic battle reenactment, except it's based on mythology, and everyone uses cow shit as the weapon. Hmm. And it's, uh, everyone's having a blast. It's a great time. Cool. I mean, it's, I would say less crazy than running with the bulls. Oh, running with the bulls is like top tier, like, death wish shit that, why would I ever, like... Running with the Bulls is up there. Or chasing that wheel of cheese down the hill. Yeah, and the cheese wheel. Mm -hmm. That and, like, Everest. Just, like, why? what are you doing? Yeah. Don't. You're asking for it. Yeah. Anything that happens to you, you are asking for. Uh, moving on now, though, from India to Indiana. Let's get some perspective on things by talking about uh, some very trashy behavior committed, committed by some people you'd generally assume to be uh, respectable. Th three Indiana judges. Andrew Adams, Sabrina Bell, and Bradley Jacobs. This week, they were suspended from their roles as judges for an incident involving a strip club, a white castle, a brawl, some gunshots, and what sounds like a fuck ton of alcohol. If you know us, you know that we love reading legal documents. So let's just go ahead and read the official description of the events from the Indiana Supreme Court. On the evening of April 30th, 2019, respondents traveled to Indianapolis to attend the Spring Judicial College the next day. After checking into their hotel rooms, respondents spent the evening socializing with other judicial officers and drinking alcoholic beverages. At around 12.30 a.m. on May 1st, respondents and Clark Circuit Court Magistrate William Dawkins met at a local bar where they continued to drink alcohol. At around 3 a.m., the group walked to a strip club and tried to enter, but found that it was closed. The group then walked to a nearby White Castle. While Magistrate Dawkins went inside, respondents stood outside the restaurant. At around 3.17 a.m., Alfredo Vasquez and Brendan Kaiser drove past the group and shouted something out the window. Judge Bell extended her middle finger to Vasquez and Kaiser, who pulled into the White Castle parking lot and exited the vehicle. Judge Bell, who was intoxicated, has no memory of the incident, but concedes that the security camera video shows her making this gesture. A heated verbal altercation ensued, with all participants yelling, using profanity, and making dismissive, mocking, or insolent gestures towards the other group. At no time did respondents move to another location in the parking lot to avoid a confrontation or de-escalate the conflict. 100% guarantee. Like, do you know who we are? Fucking judges, We're bitch. judges. You can't tell by our robes and our cool wigs? <laughs> I like to imagine they bum, were all bum. wearing robes and wigs. Yeah. And brought, they brought their them. gavels and they beat yeah. the shit out of people with yeah. them. It's not just for... Not just for order. Well, both are considered justice. Anyway, continuing. After a verbal exchange between Judge Bell and Vasquez, a physical confrontation ensued. At one point, Judge Jacobs had Kaiser contained on the ground. With his fist raised back, Judge Jacobs said, Okay, okay, we're done, we're done. Or, this is over, tell me this is over. Or words to that effect. At another point during the confrontation, Judge Adams kicked Kaiser in the back. The confrontation ended when Kaiser pulled out a gun, shot Judge Adams once, and shot Judge Jacobs twice. Judge Adams and Judge Jacobs were transported to local hospitals for treatment of their serious injuries. Judge Adams, who sustained a single gunshot wound to the abdomen, had two emergency surgeries, including a colon resectioning. Yikes. Judge Jacobs, who sustained two gunshot wounds to the chest, also had two emergency surgeries and was hospitalized for 14 days. Upon admission to the hospital, Judge Adams' serum blood alcohol level was... 0.213, or approximately 0.157 using whole blood, and Judge Jacobs' serum blood alcohol was 0.177, or approximately 0.13 using whole blood. Judge Bell's blood alcohol level was not tested, but she was intoxicated enough that she lacks any memory of the incident. That's pretty drunk, uh, by the way. Uh, Judge it's Bell. Very high. <laughs> Judge Bell remained on the scene to speak to the police and was later taken to the police station to give a recorded statement. In her statements to the police, Judge Bell asserted that she does not remember what she said to Vasquez or Kaiser or what started the physical altercations. However, while on the scene, the media videotaped Judge Bell telling police detectives in an excited state, I feel like this is all my fault, or words to that effect. Judge Bell does not remember making this statement. So yeah, I guess judges, you know... They like to party as hard as the rest of us. In their full garb. Harder even yeah. than us. Well, these, are, these are people who have reached the pinnacle of their legal profession. And they like to drink. They like to throw dollar bills at naked ladies. And they and like they to eat like, They like to eat tiny cheeseburgers. Yeah. And they don't like being yelled at by cars driving past. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anyway, all three of those judges have been suspended without pay. Uh, Jacobs and Bell for 30 days. And Adams, who also pleaded guilty to one count of misdemeanor battery for 60 days... Bit of like, they're gonna get their jobs back, but uh, you know between the suspension and like getting fucking shot, 
hope they learned their lesson. You would think that literally bad judgment <laughs> would be something that would I mean, get that's you. That's like, yeah, they're like, you've, uh, you know, you, you met. It, it was basically. It's just no, like, no, I judge other people. They're like, we're not suspending you for what you did. That's for like, that's for the actual legal system to decide. We're suspending you because you made all of this look really fucking bad. Yeah. Like this is, this is just not a good look for us. So, but yeah, so if you're in Indiana and you know, you're in court any day, especially if you're on jury duty and you get any of these people, just be like, uh, and they're like, do you have any reasons why you might not want to be in this jury? And they're like, well, my favorite internet show, Internet Today, they talked about that time that uh, you like got fucking like eight times the legal limit drunk and got kicked out of like a strip club or couldn't get in and then you went and got White Castle and then got in a fucking fist fight with some randos and then you got shot. Yeah. So I like no. I obviously can't that, be a part I, of this jury. I don't think I can be an impartial juror. No, yeah. what a fucking legend you are. Yeah, I'd be cheering you on the yeah. whole case. Woo! <laughs> get, get wild. Hey, once we're done here, you want to go shotgun some beers in the parking lot? Yeah, you show up with one of those briefcases of White Castle that they sell. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Judge, you want to go down to Cheetahs? <laughs> Throw a couple <laughs> ones around. Yeah. I'm not like that anymore. I I've cleaned up. I've cleaned up. Yeah. Case dismissed. Man. I mean, no, that's not what I mean. Shit. Uh, speaking of the criminal justice system, here's a story out of Iowa State Penitentiary, where convicted murderer Benjamin Schreiber was serving a life sentence for killing an acquaintance of his with an axe. Generally speaking, life sentence means you're spending the rest of your life in prison. In other words, you're probably going to die in prison. And that's what happened. A few years back, Benjamin Schreiber died in prison after some kidney stones caused him to develop septic poisoning and fall unconscious. He signed a do not resuscitate agreement a few years back, and when medical staff called his brother, the brother told him, if he's in pain, you may give him something to ease the pain, but otherwise you are to let him pass. So Schreiber died that day in the hospital, but only for just a moment, because doctors, uh, for whatever reason, they soon brought him back to life, fixed him up, and he has since recovered. But as Schreiber recently tried to argue in court, since he was serving a life sentence and was briefly dead, Shouldn't that mean that he's now free to go? It's a good loophole. I mean, it was a life sentence. His life ended. Therefore, sentence complete. Am I right? Rock solid. I, I, this is, uh, not wrong. This is, this is a a good argument. I believe in some parts of the old West, like if you got hung and you survived the hanging, like you're free to go. Right. Seems fair. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, unfortunately the court, the lame court, and then the lame appeals court after that, no, none of them found this argument to have much merit, which is just, you know, unimaginative on their part. Yeah. Open your minds up. Uh, so Schreiber may be living what he considers to be his second life, but he will be spending the rest of that second life and however many more lives may come after it behind bars. Mm-hmm. The old uh, loophole did not work out. Huh, well, but maybe he can appeal again and get this taken all the way up to the Supreme Court. Yeah. It's certainly an interesting case. Yeah, really makes you think. Yeah. Now, you may have noticed that my hair has uh, grown quite long as of late. Jesus. It looks better with that when I'm not wearing a hat all day. Yeah. You look like you're going to go bum a cigarette from, like, someone in, some dude in mascara. No, I'm going to go to the My Chemical Romance reunion show. Same thing. Sure. Uh, Many of you have noticed, and you let us know about it, but the reason that my hair is long, it's not laziness, nor is it fashion, obviously. I have for a while now uh, vowed not to cut my hair until this channel reaches 175,000 subscribers. We are pretty close, but still about 2,000 subs away from reaching that goal. And while we'd like to think it won't be much longer, here's a story from up in Canada that shows that sometimes making these kinds of pledges don't work out. Yeah, so up in Winnipeg. Oh, Winterpeg. A city that we have visited and can tell you from experience is a freezing cold hellscape during the wintertime. Literally uninhabitable. Uh, Up there, a guy named Chris Matthew hasn't worn long pants in 18 years. You see, back in 2001, when his local Winnipeg Blue Bombers had a shot at winning the Canadian Football League's version of the Super Bowl, the Grey Cup, he promised to only wear shorts until they secured the victory. They lost, though, and being a man of his word, Chris Matthew has not worn pants since. He says the only time he wears long pants is if he has to go to a funeral, but even then, if the family of the deceased knows about the bet, he wears shorts. The Blue Bombers haven't won a Grey Cup since 1990, and while they're apparently playing better than usual this season, Chris says, if they don't win, I'm fine. I've lived with this now for almost 20 years. I can continue. It's not that big a deal. For their sake, and for the sake of every other Bomber fan, I'd like to see him win. 
Get this man some pants. It's all right. I'm a man of my word, you see. I mean, he has adapted. Yeah. So good for him. That's, I mean, like, I, I cannot fucking imagine walking around Winnipeg in shorts in winter. They got those tunnels below the city. They do, but, like, eventually you got to go outside for something. Walk in your car. I don't know. Hmm. The man, he he can't have any nerve endings on his, his lower legs at all. At it's a superpower point. now. Basically. Yeah. Anyway, as for what Chris's wife, Darla, thinks of all this, she says... I don't care. He likes it, and I know that win or lose, he likes the shorts. And he complains, but I think he loves the attention. We've been walking down the street when it's cold out, and I have a fur coat, and he's in shorts, and people stare. And I just assure them, yes, he's an idiot. <laughs> what? It's a great... It, it's, it, he has to be actually, like, noticeable because he's the only one wearing really? shorts. What the fuck? Hey, oh, that's yeah, Chris that's, Matthews. That's Chris. He, you know, he made a real dumb bet back in 2001, and he lost the bet, and uh, he hasn't worn shorts since. It's pretty mm. crazy, huh? Yeah. What are you doing in Winnipeg in the, in the middle of winter, too, by the way? That's weird. Get out of here. You here for a movie? <laughs> what? I loved my time in Winterpeg. I had a great time. Yeah. I, once we uh, once our luggage came through and I and had... And we actually had clothes to wear. I wasn't just wearing a t-shirt and jeans. It was, it was pretty well, That was the worst part was I... So when we went there, they didn't have any of our luggage. It got lost. And I, w- I was wearing L.A. clothes. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's fine. I get all my clothes when I get there. And I didn't know about the subterranean tunnels yeah. that you're supposed to walk through. I'm just like, oh, this place is dead in the winter. The There's no one out walking out. And the temperature was, it was like negative 20 Celsius. Yeah. Like, Some walking around in jeans okay. and a t-shirt. So jeans and a t-shirt just trying to find like a, a store that would sell me any kind of clothes. And people are like, hey, you moron. <laughs> Take the tunnels. What are you doing? <laughs> is that Chris? Oh, no, that's someone else. Did you lose a bet? <laughs> Hey, Hoser, did you lose a bet? Hey, the Bombers are looking real good this year. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah uh, the Bombers are apparently looking real good this year. Yeah, apparently. Good. Um, so, I don't know. It might happen. He, fi- he might finally get to wear the pants. Uh, just like we might someday get up to 175,000 subs. If it doesn't happen, though, I mean, I guess the hair just keeps on growing. It doesn't Hey, stop. you long hair. What, what's with all that hair? Hey, long hair. <laughs> Go back to the 70s. Uh, before we get into headlines, time to read some ads. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Escape the Invasion. Ever wonder what you would do if you found yourself in the middle of a post-apocalyptic world that has been ravaged by a deadly virus inflicted by aliens? Yes. We all have. Well, from the makers of Hunt a Killer, the popular true crime mystery subscription game comes Escape the Invasion, the sci-fi game where you are a survivor on a rapidly dying Earth after an alien invasion. With Escape the Invasion, you'll receive your box of clues, physical items, and evidence each month. It's up to you to piece it all together and solve the mystery and save humanity. In Escape the Invasion, you find refuge in a government bunker, but is it safer than the outside world? Can you trust your fellow survivors? You think you're safe now that you've found refuge, but there's a council that creates and controls every aspect of life in the bunker. What will you choose? Freedom or safety? Not everything is as it seems in this challenging game where you must decide who to trust. Your decision will determine the fate of the story, the bunker, and maybe even humanity itself. Escape the Invasion has been described as an escape room delivered to your door where Fallout meets Alien. Play with friends, or if you prefer a solo adventure, you can interact with the online community to swap theories and help others out. High-quality handcrafted clues get you lost in this post-apocalyptic world and make you feel like humanity truly is in your hand. Right now, our viewers can get 20% off your first box by going to escapetheinvasion.com weird. That is, escapetheinvasion.com slash weird for 20% off your first box, escapetheinvasion.com slash weird. Can you survive the alien apocalypse? And this episode is sponsored by Quip, a great toothbrush that we both use and love. Mm -hmm. Simplify your mornings and evenings now with a simpler electric toothbrush from Quip. You probably know that you're supposed to be brushing your teeth twice daily for two straight minutes, but Quip takes the guesswork out of that by just giving you a vibrating pulse every 30 seconds to tell you to switch sides. You might also think that with electric toothbrushes, the more power the better, but you would be wrong again. Quip gives you a nice gentle vibration because it turns out a lot of people brush too hard and a lot of electric toothbrushes are too abrasive. Keep your enamel intact. And because 75% of people are brushing with old, worn out bristles, Quip even sends you new brush heads automatically every three months for just $5. I just got my replacement heads today. Yeah, and switching it out, you're like, wow, that really is a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Quip's multi-use cover is great at home and on the go, functioning as both a stand that mounts to your mirror and a travel case. We both use Quip, and we love it. It's simple, it's effective, and it isn't a big old eyesore like some electric toothbrushes can be. There's no wires or chargers, and it runs for three months on a single battery. Uh, Don't take our word for it. They've also got the backing of 25,000 dental professionals and the ADA, the American Dental Association. 
Quip starts at just $25, and if you go to getquip.com slash weeklyweird right now, you'll get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free when you get a Quip at getquip.com slash weeklyweird. All right, let's look at some headlines, starting with more of the... Never ending. The never ending OK Boomer saga of generational warfare. This is a, a well of content that never ends, and I fucking love this first headline. AARP executive on OK Boomer. OK, millennials, but we're the people that actually have the money. Wow. Just, wow. So, Every every boomer response to this stuff is like something from the onion There's or like so, the hard times. It we just started plays out with right this right into it. We started out covering this. I mean, obviously it's been around for months, but when it started reaching its pinnacle, we started covering this and it's like, ha, this is funny. And they they're are taking so it so offended. seriously. Yeah. They it's, it's they're pissed. They're taking it more seriously than anyone who was ever saying like, okay, boomer. Yeah, no, it's which was only ever, it's like, you know, it comes from a, a real Sentiment, but it's it's dismissive, it's that, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's it's shocking. They're treating it like it's like I'm gonna fucking kill you, boomer. And the best part is that they don't even understand that they're the ones keeping it in the news. Well, yeah, and this why the, the reason this one's so funny is because it's the AARP. It's, yeah, so well that just like yeah, the fact that it's like Americans retirement. I, I don't yeah. know. It's, it's a company that represents retired people or some shit. Yeah, you get like coupons or something. But it's like. It's like, okay, millennials, we're the people that actually have the money. That's why why we're mad. Yeah. You have the money and we don't. And you're taunting us. Yeah. What do you think's going to happen? Yeah. And then they, like, they. She She had had to apologize. She, but like her apology was just like, you know, I knew this soundbite would be taken out of context in social media, but it wasn't. It's literally what she fucking said. And if you knew it was like, if you knew what you were saying and that it could be taken out of context, why would you say it that way? Also, another reason why it's so stupid it's because, like, another reason why the Zoomers hate the Boomers is because the Boomers refer to anyone younger than 30 as a millennial. And she did it. And she fucking did that here. Yeah. All right, millennials. That's everyone younger than 30, right? Yeah. She's diabolical. Any, anyone who's young is a millennial. I'm actually impressed yeah. by the statement because like, she hit every mark once again. Yeah, this, is, this whole thing, the response was, like, designed to be infuriating. Yeah. Pretty good. It's like it's like the the news, uh, like all the media organizations are like finally getting a taste of viral content for old people. Oh yeah. They're like yeah, we can put cat pictures up all day or whatever story, and it's like yeah, we'll get some readership. They've never like harnessed that like the the viralness of a article that pisses off old people. Yeah. Like, look it's, at all this it's traffic. actually good for them because it's like they probably were running out of things that millennials are killing. Yeah. To write to write about. And it's obvious that old people don't give a shit about anything in the world. No, they don't. <laughs> so they're not reading all these articles. Old people like they interact with like maybe one or two people outside of their own home and they sit at home the rest of the day watching Bill O'Reilly. Well, not anymore. <laughs> but, uh, Hannity. You know, yeah, Hannity and Tucker and getting getting just afraid. Yeah. Hearing they're like, Did you hear they're throwing poop on people outside? The homeless, they're attacking them with buckets of diarrhea. You can't step foot in California without sliding or in shit what? or getting it dumped on you. <laughs> yeah. I, I guarantee you that story has been picked up by... Oh, my parents some, thought yeah. California was a hellscape before they finally visited. My dad only visited for the first time last year, and he loved it. Yeah. He was like, oh, I'd like, go back anytime. Hey, you remember how, like, Orlando and Tampa are, like, you know, they're, like, urban and people live there? Yeah. It's like that, but bigger. And oh, and with <laughs> a, just, infinitely more culture than yeah. Orlando and Tampa. Well, I don't know. Hey, hey, no. <laughs> we had the Cubans here. They made the great cigars. Ha cha 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 is something uh, anyone's dad would probably say. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the generational war, though. Yeah. Gen Z is calling Gen X the Karen generation. Oh, geez. Now Gen X is going to go pissed off and write a bunch of think pieces. They've sat this one out for too long. Take a side, Gen X. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. At least Gen Z is is specifying the different generations instead of just, instead of keeping everything under the boomer tag. Yeah. They're like, all right. Oh, you're getting upset because we're lumping you all together in a group? Yeah. How about we call you the Karen generation? Well, that's, and like, the Gen Z's parents would be Gen X. Boomers would be like their grandparents. Yeah. So it makes sense, you know, being youth, they would have problems with their parents' generation. Yeah. I, I, t- I don't like that they're using the Karen generation because, first of all, it's like, the whole Karen thing is, for, first of all, it's fucking annoying and I wish it would go away. It's been played out for a long yeah, time. Uh, it's also just, it's kind of sexist. It's like, 
Because like the whole meme about like, oh, like Karen wants to talk to the manager. Like I, in my, in my life, I have seen way more men ask to talk to the manager and be dicks about it than I've seen women actually do it. Mm, I worked at Target for years when I was younger. Yeah. Like really young. In customer service. Uh, this this is just uh, circumstantial evidence. Well, but, that makes uh, sense, though, because yeah. that's shopping. I'm saying, like, in restaurants, I've seen way more men, yeah. like, just be total fucking assholes to wait staff and, like, kitchen staff and shit like that. I don't know. It's it's de- What I'm saying is it's the whole idea of, like, the Karen generation. There's got to be a more gender neutral term <laughs> for that. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. They The Gen Z, they're mad. They they're mad. mad. They're, gonna, they're coming for us next. I know. I know. <laughs> I can't wait. Well, they already have the term. The millennials is like a derogatory term at this point. Right. But they're going to come up with something even meaner. Yeah. Like teenagers, that's their greatest strength is cruelty. Yeah. <laughs> they're very mean. <laughs> they will cut you down. Yeah. Uh, I just can't wait for the next Call of Duty release. Generational Warfare. Yeah. It's going to be <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. You've played Modern Warfare. Get ready for Generation Warfare. Yeah. There's not a lot of guns in it. It's mostly like... Yeah. The, the villains, they, they send you out into the map yeah. uh, with, like, just not nearly enough resources, mm-hmm. and they yell at you for, like, they basically gaslight you. They're like, you know, when I was five minutes into this map, I'd already accomplished quite a bit, and yet here you are just sitting on your ass, basically. Yeah. They, they, they frustrate you with logical fallacies, like, yeah. hey, how's your participation trophy? But then you're like, you invited participation trophies. Yeah. Yeah. You are the ones that were giving the kids the participation trophies and then complaining about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't, can't wait for the next update. And, uh, generational generational war- warfare. Call of Duty generational yeah. warfare. Moving on. Michigan man attacks intruder with replica battle axe after assailant interrupts Rick and Morty. We're at I, it again. This fucking story. Like, the guy looks perfect, too. Just, like, Star Wars shirt, big old beard. Ha- has a large collection of... Uh, you know, replica uh, medieval weaponry. Mm-hmm. Loves video games. Rick and Morty. He was very, uh, he he really wanted to make sure that people didn't call him a LARPer, though. Because he's like, it's not LARPing. It's simulated medieval combat. We take it very seriously. It's dangerous. We get hurt out there. It's not LARPing. Yeah. It's, it's grounded in reality. None of this fantasy shit. We take these real weapons. They're forged the same way they were forged hundreds of years ago. And we do battle in yeah. a controlled setting. But we do battle. And then everyone down at the flea market is like, do not arrest this man. He was defending himself against an intruder. Also, we need his continued business. These ninja stars and battle axes aren't going to sell themselves. Yeah. Yeah, everyone makes fun of mall ninjas. Well, guess what? Yeah, they're defending their property. This man's life was saved through uh, medieval technology. He would defend you too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, good for him. Yeah. It just so happened that it happened during Rick and Morty, I guess. Well, but yeah. when you watch Rick and Morty 24 hours a day, yeah. any intruder is going to interrupt Rick and Morty. Well, yeah. Of course. Of course. Italian council is flooded immediately after rejecting measures on climate change. Yeah, it's funny. And it's like literally the chambers of the city it's council. in Venice, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Venice, it's, it's the worst flood in something like 50 or 60 years. Mm-hmm. Not good. It's that and, Jake uh, Gyllenhaal behind it. It's like literally they within five minutes of them holding a vote on like taking measures to combat climate change by like switching the city buses to electric instead of diesel. Like the right wing parties were all like, nope, they shut it all down. And then like within five minutes, they all had to evacuate because the water uh, well, Elliot, came up through the floor. <laughs> if you drive electric buses in a city flooded with water... What do you think is going to happen? You get electrocuted. That's you, a good everyone's it's gonna, they're, they're going to be rolling death machines. Yeah, it's a good point. Jeez, Elliot, didn't think of that. Fucking, they were. You right don't have to along. be on the left side of your brain all the time. These conservatives, they were onto something. Yeah. They're looking out for everyone's safety. If I were Venice, I would simply attach pontoons to the sides of all my buildings, so that when the water level rose, the buildings would rise. Yeah, they have developed something that. that like pushes the water out or something. I guess it's not working, but. Uh, I mean, it's a very old city that yeah. was only designed for, like, a thousand people to live in. Yeah. And uh, now it gets, like, 50,000 tourists per day. It's completely unsustainable. And, uh, yeah, it's sinking into the fucking water because it was built, like, 800 years ago. Let it drift away. Turn it into, like, real-life Atlantis. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's the most submitted headline of the week. Feral hogs find and destroy cocaine worth $22,000 hidden in woods. This also happened in Italy. Yeah. Where it's flooding. Uh, yeah. I didn't know this. 
uh, Italy has like a lot of feral hogs. I was looking at it, it was like per capita compared to the U.S., where we you know we need AR-15s to yeah you know ward off the the 20, thirty to fifty feral hogs that are at our door. Yeah, we think we have a lot of feral hogs. They have like four times the amount per capita of feral hogs. They like, need they're them. fucking everywhere. Pe- they they eat nothing but cured meat all the time. They need. They need those feral hogs. Yeah. Uh, the salami isn't going to butcher itself. Yeah. So this story about the cocaine hogs, not nearly enough information here. Not yeah, no. detail. As soon as I read this, I was like, they're like, yeah, no, the, the 30 hogs. to 50 feral hogs on their own is terrifying. Yeah. Enough to shoot uh, through your children to, to kill them. But feral hogs on cocaine is a completely different yeah, story. Yeah. All the stories, they're just like, yeah. And then the hogs destroyed all the cocaine and beep, bop, boop. I'm like. So what happened to the cocaine hogs? Where'd they go? I mean, obviously, we'd have heard about it if they were like... Oh, they're already in Germany. They've been running all night. (laughs) Great, now we have a feral hog problem. Yeah, I mean, they're already... Angela Merkel, though, she'll just run them over in her fucking combine or whatever the the big tractor is. She loves farming simulators. She, yeah. She was raised in East, East Germany. Yeah. Lived a, you know, simpler life back in those days. Everyone in Germany that's played farming simulator their whole lives, they see those hogs coming and they're like, finally, my time to show off my farming skills. Well, the thing is, in Germany, anytime you kill a feral hog, you have to take it and get it tested for uh, radioactivity hmm. because the the fallout from Chernobyl is still present in, uh, like, southeastern Germany's forests. So wait, hold on. We have the radioactive <laughs> hogs in Germany meeting the cocaine <laughs> hogs from Italy... Yeah. In Switzerland. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Teaming up. They, and they're safe in Switzerland. Like, they, they're no extradition. The cocaine hogs and the radiation hogs. And gonna, Nazi money. And <laughs> they're going to, they're gonna like, mate on, you know. Piles of Nazi gold. Yeah. On top of Hitler's bunker. Yeah. And spirit of the Third Reich is going to rise up into the cocaine radioactive hogs. We got a situation on our hands, folks. And it's Coked up good. radioactive Nazi hogs. Nazi hogs. <laughs> coming to a theater near you. <laughs> nah, coming to the Sci-Fi Channel. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's pitch it to them. Coked up radioactive, or radioactive cocaine Nazi hogs. Yeah. In Switzerland. Yeah, you can mix it up. I'm sure there's a great way to, to just, phrase that. Just everyone's barricading themselves into the chalets. Yeah. Eating their Toblerones. Scared to death of the radioactive cocaine Yeah, everyone's of- hiding and they're like... The hogs, they're always on time. Mm-hmm. Like, like clock. You can hear them coming. <laughs> yeah. Glowing green over the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. Just their snouts just falling apart from all the cocaine. <laughs> all, all the just cocaine. Just drooping. Yeah. <laughs> like Hardy yeah. Lang in yeah, hog that, form. He's, he's going to be in it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Him and Andy Circus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, baby given free entry to nightclub for life after mother gives birth on dance floor. Okay. She just, you know, she... She's pregnant, but sometimes you just got to dance. Take your chance. Now, in my mind, I'm picturing this as like a disco club in the 70s, but well, I'm it, sure it's like is, an EDM. Oh, it's France, so. Oh. I don't know. It could be a, a discotheca. Yeah. Whatever the fuck they call okay. it. Yeah, this lady, she was out like. Smoking a cigarette, drinking some wine, yeah, dropping yeah, babies. All, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I can smoke now. The baby's coming out any second. Yeah. Yeah, she was like, oh, she, her friends invited her out. And, like, they said, like, she wasn't drinking or anything. But well, she that's was, good. She was there until closing. Like, it closes at, like, 4 a.m., and that's when that's when she started giving birth. Oh, she wasn't life. drinking. She was on loads of ecstasy. Yeah, though. that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Alcohol, not good for the baby, but, you know, the pills, they, they, they skip the baby. They go straight to me. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, congratulations to that baby. Yeah, for free entry. Baby's going to turn out great now that it can uh, go into this nightclub for free for the rest of its life. It's such a dumb marketing for the nightclub, too. It's like, are we even going to be here in 21 years? Uh, or I guess 18 are, in Paris or France. Probably not. I think it's like the average nightclub is around for like two or three years tops. Yeah, or at They're least switches, business to run. At least switches owners or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. See you in 18 years, kid. Yeah. Wow. Well. Couple toasts their marriage with Mr. and Mrs. Bongs on wedding day. Yeah. This is in California? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Everyone's too high here. Their all the entire time. wedding album is like the two of them with giant bongs, just like in the forest. It's like that with any like any <laughs> fanatical bullshit. It's like the same thing where people get married dressed as fucking like vampires. Black <laughs> Widow and Hulk. Oh god. They're like it, it, yeah, like vampires or I mean, it's, it, Harry Potter characters. There's Harry Potter weddings. Yeah. 
Everything I, is lame if you're. A, I if find you're, it lame and distasteful, but I, it's kind of cool that you know they're uh, losers and they're you know they're they're happy. They're they, probably they, not losers. They found each other. They they're one dimensional people, and they they found another similarly one dimensional person, and they're gonna spend their rest of their one dimensional lives together. Yeah, I mean. Th- it's your wedding. You, you, you're going to be looking at that for the rest of your life. You really I, want it to be like, I don't know. Look at pictures Who of that. cares? It's their special day. Let them do it. I they know, want. I know, I know. I had to look past a bunch of like religious stuff at my wedding. I was like, yeah, do the prayer. Uh, I, I didn't. I wasn't like that. I was just like, okay, that, yeah, this is just something you sure. have to do. But then, yeah, then grandma's just like, okay, now, I'm, now, I, now I don't get to do my complaint later. And then and she then comes up and she's happy. like, now you guys can have sex. Thanks, grandma. I bet it'll be worth the wait. That's right, grandma. <laughs> yep. Grandma, uh, please sit down. You guys want to hit this doobie? (laughs) It's legal now. (laughs) Want to get our pictures taken with it? Elephant named after Osama bin Laden kills five people in India. Obviously, I mean, it's like, what did you expect? Yeah. It's Osama bin Laden, the elephant. I I was looking into this more. Well, first off, this Osama bin Laden, because there are multiple Osama bin Ladens. This is like the third Osama bin Laden in like 20 years. Multiple elephants? I think it's just a thing in India where, like, when elephants start assaulting villages, which happens a lot, mm-hmm. uh, they like naming the elephants Osama bin Laden. So okay. This is the, the most recent of many. But this Osama bin Laden was actually caught and not killed. And they're saying they want to train it to, like, patrol some wildlife reserve. I mean, good fucking luck. I don't think he's down with that. I think he's made himself loud and clear how he feels about, like, humans. Yeah. But, I mean, good luck. Sounds like a bad idea, but uh, who am I to judge? Yeah. Elephants, uh, absolutely terrifying animals. Mm-hmm. They will kill you yes. if they want to. Yeah. Most of the time, they don't know that they can. But once they find out, it's kind of it. <laughs> they, will, they will kill again. Holy shit, I can do this? Yeah. No. That's like, that's like every fucking... Uh, the Can't one... do it in America. Edison, or what was it, Edison that killed the elephant? Yeah, Thomas Edison. Uh, he, he electrocuted it? To blackmail Nikola Tesla, he uh, applied direct current to a, <laughs> a live elephant that had traveled halfway around the fucking world to come to America. And he it's like one fucking of the, killed it. It's just, one of the first films yeah. ever produced. And yeah, It's on YouTube. That's like just the most, you know, American fucking thing. Hey, we just invented a uh, uh, film. M- miraculous technology. It's like you're there. You can see things happening all over the world. Oh, yeah? What do you got, then? We fucking well, killed an elephant. We got some Lumiere brothers of just, like, you know, man walking on street. Uh, we got this uh, Thomas Edison murdering a fucking elephant, just frying the shit out of it. Huh. Just applying uh, a lethal amount of electricity to this majestic creature until it dies. Won an Oscar. Pretty cool. Won huh? an Oscar that year. <laughs> yeah, great shit. I, in, I dedicate this to the elephant. I think it was, like, in, like, the... It's like as soon as LSD became a known thing, someone mm-hmm. tried drugging an elephant with LSD and killed it too. Oh. They gave it like they did. They got the dosage wrong. <laughs> Just like the nervous system shut down. We love to kill elephants. It's an American pastime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of American pastimes, Disneyland Bridge breaks after man allegedly jumps on it to show children it's safe. Love it. It still looked safe afterwards. Yeah, like I mean, there's there's just, so just, many fail safes. It just broke a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But that kid's never going to trust their dad again. Yeah, no. You just ruin your relationship with your child. Yeah. Thanks, Mickey. Or use it as a learning experience to say, that's why you always test it out first. Trust no one. Not even yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not even your dad. Yeah. You, anytime you go anywhere, kids, you have to try your best to destroy everything. Yeah. To make sure that it's safe. Just testing out the durability. Yeah. Before I get in the car, I kick the shit out of it. Yeah. If it can't handle my kicks, how is it going to handle a high-speed crash? Elliot thought he got hit by another car. It was just me before he picked me up for work. <laughs> I'm not getting in this death machine until I give it a good once-over. Oh, my God. But now we know. It's a strong car. It's very strong. I would yeah. trust it with my life. Yeah. Yeah. That final headline. NYPD busts Bronx women who could be responsible for making 24,000 911 calls. Just block the number. Yeah, you would think so. I don't know. They, they sent 24,000 911 calls since June, and so it adds up to, like, 200 calls a day, oh. possibly, like, between 100 and 200. That woman, Jennifer Lopez. What? She's still Jenny from the Bronx. She never left. She's got a lot of time on her hands. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of, not, like, this woman needs a hobby. And, yes, they should have just blocked her. She has a hobby. Her hobby, yeah. And it, was, it wasn't just, like, calling 911 and hanging up. She, like, she would make shit up. 
She would call them up and be like, oh my God, the building's on fire. You gotta send, you gotta send three trucks. We're all gonna die. Oh my God, ah! She's done like a hundred something times a day. Take her phone away. She's just gonna get a new one. She never learned the story of the boy who cried wolf. I think she did, and she sympathized with no, the boy. No, one day she's gonna actually be on fire. Well, yeah. Okay, lady. Yeah, 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 you're on fire again. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, see you next time. Oh, look what happened. Yeah. Well, at least she's not going to call anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fair. Well, now she's in jail, apparently. She's probably out by now, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, you get one phone call. <laughs> Don't you do it! <laughs> Don't you do it! If you see her pressing a nine and two ones, <laughs> cut the line. Oh, but we have to dial nine to get out, so just be, mm. be extra careful. Anyway, that's that's, uh, that's uh, this week's weekly weird news. Oh God! Um, be sure to check out our <laughs> weekly Patreon slash YouTube members podcast. Mm -hmm. We had a brief guest appearance from Mr. Joel Rubin as our uh, Jew of the week. We yeah. needed we had we had some Jew questions about Hanukkah. Questions about Judaism. So we called up Joel Rubin, like the token character that he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, also be sure to watch the latest news dump about Disney Plus rolling out. And Nicolas Cage and playing Nicolas Cage. Big Nicolas Nick Cage. Cage news and uh, new episode of ET. Or, oh oh God, where? Who? What year are you in? I don't know. Internet yeah. Today Daily about uh, really dumb ads on Twitter. Yep. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.